What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm here in Miami giving my first talk of 2024 to a group of entrepreneurs, how they can start making content, how to spot trends, and how they can start getting views for their business accounts right now. Let's get to it. So there's a shift happening right now in social media that people want less edited content, which is a really good thing for a lot of us that are just getting started because I think in the past couple of years, the bar set really high of having these really high uh, production videos, a lot of animations, graphics, and I think a lot of us have just been over censored by all of this content. So there is a shift and I think when you look at some of the bigger YouTubers out there, like Mr. Beast is someone that we all know and heard of, his videos don't really have a lot of high production, but they're very entertaining because they feel kind of like something that's going to be, uh, you know, homemade. So. The shift that's happening right now is people want less edited content. People want authenticity. They wanna be able to connect with the human. So with this shift that's happening, people that have smaller accounts can actually reach a lot more people uh, through views. So uh, before I would say that, you know, if you had the million followers or 500,000 followers, that's where a lot of the attention went. But now we work with clients that have like two or 3,000 followers and they're doing 200,000 views, 500,000 views. So the algorithms have been shifting their attentions to smaller accounts to be able to give them a chance to grow. So the views are not reserved for the big accounts anymore. And the good thing, you don't need fancy gear. All you need is your iPhone. This is literally the best. This is still an iPhone 13 Pro. I've shot probably four videos that have done over a million views using this phone right here. The only thing I'm gonna tell you guys, when you're gonna record your videos, just wipe your screen because sometimes I see videos and it's really blurry and it's just, you know, you have a little bit of oil in there, just clean that up and your videos will look really good. Um, we'll actually get into that. Maybe uh, there's a slide for the Androids in here, so. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry? I don't know. I just don't like the green text when it comes in, but. <laughs> um, so views equals followers. You don't need the, the big accounts anymore, like I mentioned. If you're able to get views in your account, you're gonna be able to grow your followers. And one thing you guys have to remember in a big mindset that I want you guys to think about is that, you know, with content, you need to constantly be showing up before somebody follows you. So it's not one video is not gonna do it for you. You need to be showing up every day before somebody really is able to connect with you. And eventually those views will turn into followers. And the truth is, it's gonna suck. In the beginning when you're making content, it's not gonna be good. Um, people are not gonna be watching you, but that's okay because you're gonna be working through those kinks. You're gonna be understanding the platform better. You're gonna be figuring out what works for you and what doesn't. So you gotta put in the reps. You know, you gotta, you gotta put in the time, you have to get in there. It's just like, you know, the analogy is going to the gym because you do have to get in there. You have to be working through the little things and figuring out what really works for you. Um, this is a really nice Chinese proverb I like, is everything must be hard before it can be easy. And I just want that to kind of be a mindset for you guys, at least making the shift that in the beginning, you're gonna have to go through a period that it's not gonna, that's gonna be very uncomfortable. So. This right here is my first vlog I've ever shot in 2017 when I gave that talk at UF. Uh, it has 73 views. It was 72 last night. I watched it to, add, to make the slide, so it went up. <laughs> but here's the thing. That video sucked. I mean, it sucked. It wasn't that bad, but no one was watching back there. And, you know, things that I learned through this video is that I used to mumble and I wouldn't announce it properly. As she mentioned, I was born in Brazil. I moved here when I was 11. I learned English as a second language. And it wasn't until I got on camera that I started realizing of like how fast I used to, I used to talk at times and, and not enunciate things. But video helped me become a better communicator. And just with communicating, this is a skill that if you guys put the energy and time into right now, it's gonna translate in so many different parts of your life because we are in communications. We talk to business owners, we talk to other people. And the better that you can get at speaking, the better you're gonna be doing a camera, but the better you're just gonna be at life. So. Some of the things from hitting record that I learned is that the repetition, you're gonna get better. You're gonna build your confidence to be able to, I would tell you guys, like seven years ago, thinking about being in a room like this, it was something that would scare me. But think about this, um, you know, those 73 views that I got in my first video, imagine if those were 73 business owners that watched that video. You know, how many of you guys would like to be in a room full of 73 doctors or nurses or uh, office managers then you had their attention? So. 
you get to share your expertise, sort of like I'm doing today. You know, I have my team here um, capturing content that's gonna help me be able to share my message. You're gonna build connections. And then that also helps you grow your brand and your opportunities. So the big one for me was, I was featured in Gary Vee's Crushing It. And that was through me sharing content. I actually met Gustavo, which is back there. And through that, that connection led me to be here. And this is something that happened five, six years ago. So the good thing about content is that once it's up in the internet, it's up in the internet. But it's also the bad thing about content. If it goes up in the internet, <laughs> it's always gonna be there. Your beginning might look different, you know? So everyone might start a little bit different. Some of your videos might be different, but I just want you guys to remember that's okay. So you're not gonna get views. It's gonna feel uncomfortable and there will be excuses you're gonna make that you don't wanna do this or like you don't think your hair looks good enough and things like that. I want you guys to just get out there and hit record. So how many of you guys know who this image is? <laughs> you guys know who it is? Bezos, Bezos correct. So uh, Bezos, one of the things that, you know, is not really talked about is they were the number one spending on Google AdWords when it came out uh, in uh, 1999, 2000. And that's where all the attention is at. And of course, we're not all gonna build Amazon, but I want you guys to think of this, of like his beginning was very different and he put his time and effort into where the attention is at and it was through Google AdWords. So right now the attention is in social media and it's, a re it's I mean, he had to pay to get in front of people. Anything you post on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, it's free. Like there's literally no cost of entry to that. Now, if you wanna boost a post, you're gonna do ads and stuff like that, of course, but there's no other time like today to be making content. So to increase your conversion, to get more customers, to share, to sell more products, to start building awareness, you start by making content. But I want you guys to start thinking about yourselves to become a media company versus someone that sells scrubs. I want you guys to share content that, you know, if, how can you start educating and entertaining people? So what do you create? And this is a question I get all the time, right? It's like, where do I get started? So I'm gonna teach you guys about my sock theory but not that sock, this one, strategic organic content. I want you guys to start thinking about what are the questions and things that you mentioned today about like, what are the things that people ask you about all the time that you can start talking about? Like, what are the new uh, colors and new features? And what's the process of ordering my first, uh, you know, scrub for my whole team? Start thinking of how can I start creating content that's gonna help me in my sales process? Uh, so here's a couple of different content pillars and normally how we try when we start looking at clients and what we need to start doing. Uh, I think you guys all should take a photo of this and just start thinking to yourself, so education, what are myths about your industry? What are myths about, you know, is it complicated to order with you or should they go through, you know, some other online shopper? Uh, so this, you can go through a whole list of these um, and these are just going to help you make content. But one thing I want you guys to focus is that look at the different columns for educational, inspirational, and promotional. I want you guys to really focus on educational and inspirational content first, and then really saving the promotional at the end. What are the little things that you can make your consumer's lives easier? So like one that I saw and I'll share later on is like how to fold your scrub. Like how many of you guys have a video on your Instagram page about how to fold a scrub? You know, it's something so simple, but like I want you guys to start thinking about like what's something I can create that is not necessarily promoting my brand, but it's something that's associated with your brand. Um, so we got next here. So one of the big things is the FAQs. So when you guys are looking for ideas, and this is kind of going off social media, but this is a great tool. So Google search, I don't know if you guys know this, Google has been kind of ramping up the way that people find content. But if you go in right now and you type in anything about scrubs on Google, Google is gonna give you a list of uh, content ideas or what people are asking. So normally where this is at is if like the fourth or fifth search result, this is gonna pop up. And when you end up clicking on these, they're gonna be links down here with these answers. Those answers are, is what people are already telling Google what they're searching for. So what we like to do, and I've done this for my business and other clients' business, is one, this is an unlimited amount of content ideas for videos that you guys uh, can be creating. So if we're shooting a video today, I would be like, hey, here's the average price of how much a scrub costs. And then you can go into the little details, the next video. So literally you can sit through here. So the thing we like to do with this is once we get all, all these ideas, one, you can start adding these to your website as your uh, FAQ page, which is gonna help with your SEO. But then to go next level, Google my business, which now is just Google, 
you can actually add these to the FAQ page in your Google My Business page. So that's also gonna help with your local SEO. So this is like an unlimited way for you to build content for your website, for your Google My Business to grow your presence, but then also social media content. Um, Jim Rome, love this dude, has a lot of great videos. I wish I got to meet him, but I love this saying, success leaves clues. And I want you guys to really start thinking about that. And I want you to start paying attention to when you're scrolling on the internet, on the social, what is grabbing your attention? What are the things that are sticking out to you? Because if it's catching your eye, it's probably also catching somebody else's attention. So um, have you guys seen this clip? My soccer football fans, no? So this is uh, a video of David and Victoria Beckham. Uh, this is a documentary that came out uh, last year in Netflix. And this clip went viral on social media. Um, they, it kind of turned into memes and different things like that. But I'm gonna show you guys sort of what they did with this that I thought it was genius. This clip went viral and like, it's just like, you guys all laughed, right? So it's one of those things like, man, that caught people's attention. So what Uber Eats did, they actually caught onto this and I think like when you guys are looking for content ideas is like look at meme accounts because meme accounts have literally, they're just reproducing things that are already going viral and they are turning it into different things. So Uber, this is a promo for the Super Bowl. So David and I are gonna be in a little commercial. Be honest. I be am. honest. <sighs> okay. It's a big commercial. Tell them what it's during. David, I'm trying. No, tell them what it's during. I'm okay, it's during the big baseball game. The super big baseball game. Oh, was it the hockey ball? Hockey, hockey ball. Oh, and tell them about Jessica Aniston. <gasps> Jessica Aniston is going to be in it too. Thank you. We love Jessica. We love Jessica. <laughs> So it's great, right? They tapped into something that they already knew that worked and they made it into a commercial. Like there's not a lot of funny commercials that people are doing this. So I thought that was really genius. And the good thing about this, what I loved about that they kept it social is that you only see Uber Eats mentioned twice. Once is one of the bags that's actually on a table and then the other one is at the end. So, you know, it's one of those things that they're like, hey, they didn't, they didn't place the whole commercial around Uber Eats, but more of associating a brand with it. So once you guys start thinking about that, and I get it, we all don't have billion dollar budget to hire those actors. So, but there are different strategies that I'm gonna share with you guys. So do you guys know this, Do with the sign? Another popular account? No, yes, okay. So this guy blew up right before the pandemic and he just kind of, same thing, pays attention to what's happening in the industry and makes signs about it. So the first one there is three, more three day weekends. We all love that, right? So like it really, it's very relatable to everyone. And the other one is shut up about stealing cups. I don't know, a lot of you girls have one. My girl got one recently. So it was like, he's really, really tapping into this. So you don't need a big budget for this. Like the sign and everything, like doesn't cost you that much to put that together. So with one of our clients is a coffee roaster. When I saw this account starting to come up and I saw, um, and I want you guys to, uh, before I go to the next point, I want you guys to look at, is this my pointer? You see that? 20 to almost a quarter million likes on this post. And then also, you know, 200,000. And then look at the comments. Success leaves clues. What are people paying attention to? So like that was one thing that really caught my eye. So what we did with my coffee roaster uh, client, we just made a very simple fun, fun play off of this. You deserve better beans, stop drinking bad coffee. <laughs> now for them, this is the first one that we posted, 4,000 views, they have about 10,000 followers. This account, this post really blew up their account for them. They, they never saw this kind of engagement, but we were early on this trend and seeing like, hey, what was working? What were people paying attention to? So this is a concept that we shot like Saturday morning. I think it took us like 10 minutes. It took us longer to end up writing the signs and finding pieces of cardboard to do this and then just taking the photo and, and sharing this. But it's one of those things, like you don't need a high production budget. You just really need to tap in Another one that we did um, that I didn't share on here, but it was the same client. Do you guys remember the ocean spray when it was like, it became like a very popular thing last year? No? Some of you did? So kind of the same thing. I ended up, uh, get, they, they were selling like cold brew jugs. I literally got on my skateboard and I was drinking the jugs and doing that. But it was the same thing, like we saw a formula that was already working for another vertical and we just replicated that.
the same, same thing, kind of the same theory. Um, when you guys start seeing things that are working, I want you guys to start looking at that as content ideas. So this is another very simple thing that you guys could do that doesn't require any fancy gear, no fan, like you, I have a little tripod, I'll show you guys, but this is very simple. So I actually saw Style Runners, they sell, uh, they're like online shoe retailer. I saw this ad or their post when I was looking for ideas of what to talk to you guys about today. And then just scrolling because my feed is like all over the place because like we work with a lot of different clients. And then like this one was one that came up for the coffee. And I was like, oh, that's really interesting. I saw this, I remember seeing this concept for the shoe. And then I was like, how many likes does that one have? I was like, oh, that's pretty good. And then I saw this other one here. So let me show you the video with you guys. Oh, a little bit of up in there. So, very simple, nothing's happening there, right? So like, you're talking about right here, like when you guys are talking about the new scrubs with the pants are coming out, video, all of you guys will be making it real quick. Any new features, stuff like that, all you need is a couple of people with an Android phone if they have it, and then an iPhone. <laughs> Maybe the Android is shooting it, I don't know. But I want you guys to look at that. So here's the other one. So very simple, but it was the same thing we saw, a trend that's already happening. It's very easy for you guys to replicate it. So this is uh, our interior design client. This is one of those things where I want you guys to think about that list of things, that uh, list of like top things I would never do, uh, three things to avoid. Here are my three favorite things. Those are really good because what happens is that people are gonna disagree with you. So with this video, I think it was like top three countertops that she loves or that she would avoid. Oh, three backsplashes to avoid. So this one right here had 70 or 68,000 views on Instagram. Then it did about like another 20 on Facebook. And then it did like maybe another 20 on YouTube. Here are the top three kitchen backsplashes I would avoid as an interior designer. Number one is white subway tile. This gives a very generic feel to the kitchen and doesn't have the charm. You could sub out using a handmade subway tile, which will give you some character. Number two is small square glass tile. You can choose to use glass tile, but maybe in more of a linear format and not a tiny square. Number three would be to avoid putting your backsplash on a diamond pattern. This will just date your kitchen and not give you that updated look that you're looking for. So very simple, she's just talking about what she would do and not do. But the thing about this, with anybody's opinion, there's gonna be people that are gonna disagree with you and that's great. Because the more of the haters comment on your post, the more viral it goes and the more attention that she gets. So funny enough, she had a client that saw this video and she's like, I have white subway tile. She's like, when can we set up a meeting for you to come in and redo her house, right? So it's like you're tapping into people's wants and needs, but just by sharing your thoughts and your feelings about what is it that you wanna do. And same thing, this is a very low production uh, you know, video. All we did is set up a tripod with a light and we just, I was asking her questions. Hey, what are the backsplashes that you hate? You know, nothing crazy, but it just took a little bit of time for us you know, to sit down in the afternoon and go through some of these. So, uh, and I'm gonna share another example uh, good versus bad social media. So this video here, uh, this company is away. I think you guys are familiar with them. They are suitcase brand. Uh, this video here had 2.8 million views. So, why do you guys think that video worked? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Perfect. Anybody else? It's funny. funny. So you're right, it's relatable. Everybody knows the pain of packing, and it's something that if anyone 
it, the more relatable you can make the content, the more uh, shareable it can be. So another big thing that I want you guys, I guess we didn't, I didn't make a slide for it, but if you go back and you look at the, the likes and shares, this is a really great metric for you guys. Anytime you're scrolling through content is the amount of shares. To me, the amount of shares that a content get, it's, it's probably more important than the actual comments that it is because that's more brand awareness that people are, are new people are gonna be seeing your brand. And the great thing about like suitcase that kind of makes it an easier one because like, you know, it, it's challenges people really love, but then also, you know, anyone could be in this situation. So I want you guys to really think about that. Yes. So great question. So there's a lot of stuff happening right now within TikTok itself. I don't know if you guys saw that Universal Music, uh, they were trying to close a deal with TikTok and they actually just banned or they just pulled down all their songs. On Instagram right now, you can still uh, use a lot of these songs. I actually have a slide for that that I'll show you. But as long as you're not promoting the song or like boosting that ad, you're able to use it. The only, way, the only thing is, is that you have to edit or when you upload the, the video into Instagram, you just have to add that song on there. Also, if you guys have questions, ask away. I want this, I don't wanna be up here just like screaming at you all day. So if there's anything that I can help you with and you're like, hey, I have a thought about this, I'm here to answer it for you. Um, another big thing is that was low production, right? No fancy camera gear, nothing like that. And they're not selling you in the suitcase. And I want you guys to really start thinking about the content that you're making as you're not trying to sell them on something, but you're just trying to constantly build brand awareness and grab their attention. Um, so this is another ad that they did, but this only got 17,000 views. I know 17,000 views are a lot of views for a lot of us, but I think when you, you're doing uh, you know, some good numbers on an account, you wanna start looking at figuring out, hey, why did this video work while this other one didn't? <laughs> So that one obviously looks like an ad, right? So you have to remember, most, most of us, when we're going into social media, it's either during our lunch break, which as business owners, a lot of us don't have, we just work all day. But the end of the night is when we're trying to check out, right? We're trying to mentally get away from the world. And we don't want to look at ads. We want to be entertained. So if you go back to this one here, 10. So... 17,000 views, 10 shares, right? So it's one of those things, and I think after this video, uh, when you look at their social media account, they really start changing the content and what they were making because like I said, the number of shares, it really indicates of how good your content is gonna be doing and how many people are gonna come across it. So this does some other ideas um, for you guys. I saw this one, like just randomly searching for stuff. I think this is a great one to introduce new colors. Like you guys are coming up new colors to come out. This could be fun. So nothing crazy about that one. Literally a tripod that had a cool wall. Like your background does matter. Like you don't want to be in the storage closet shooting stuff and look so messy, but you know, you don't have like you don't have to just make a post that says new colors available right and it's not going to be shareable but something like that it does take a little bit more time and effort but it's not that hard for you guys to do so here's the other video we talked about with the uh, folding the scrubs nothing crazy but something that all of you guys it's one of those tips of like hey how can i make the people that I want to purchase from me, how can I entertain them? How, are, how can I give them value? So like other things I'd consider for you guys would be like even maybe local partnerships with there is a um, dry cleaner that you guys like to work with that maybe you could start doing something, get creative with collaborating with other local businesses on how you can start getting in front of more customers. And with that collaboration, uh, and I'll talk more about that, is if you guys are going to these uh, doctor's offices, like talk to these business owners and find out like, hey, who do you have in your office that's actually active on social? Like, if you guys don't have the time to create content, find somebody that is, you know, young, that's in it, that's doing the content, and figure out a deal that you can work out with them that they can start making the content for you. The only thing I will tell you is when you do hire these people, 
just let them make the content. Um, I've been in situations where people like even try to hire me or work with other clients that you put in a lot of stipulations on what they can make and what they can do, that the content no longer feels organic. Um, so um, here is, uh, so going back until we talked about the music, um, Instagram really wants, I'm telling you like, I've never seen Instagram put so much effort into making content. When I start editing, videos for Instagram, it was, your limit was 15 seconds. Like that was like the, the most you could do and there's like nothing else. So they're really putting effort and technology inside of the app to make content creation super easy for you guys. So as long as you're just constantly updating the app, there's always gonna be new features that are coming out. When you guys go to actually that, so this button here, so when you guys open up the feed, that's to create an Instagram reel. I don't know how many of you guys have done that yet, but when you click that button, this is where it's gonna uh, open up to you. So up top, you're gonna scroll over, and this is where you talked about uh, trending. So right here are gonna be trending sounds. They're literally telling you, hey, these songs right here, it's what is going viral right now, and they're actually gonna be this is like gives you the little extra boost into getting in front of people. But your content still has to be good, but you can go through this list and figure out like what songs, like literally a whole list. And it's telling you like how many, uh, you know, the numbers of what, how many people are listening to it and the replays. So personally, what I like to do is find a song that's be like less than 20,000 uh, plays on it. Anything that's already like a million or higher, it just becomes so saturated like anything else because there's so many people using it. So I want to find songs that, that are in the up and up. So like if you find a good song that has like 2K like plays on it, I try to use the ones with the lower ones to be able to, because there's still time to grow. And then if your video catches that early trend, it's one of the ones that end up getting recommended and you start getting pushed out to a lot more people. Can I ask a quick yes, please. When you're building like the original reel on Instagram and then you want to transfer it over to TikTok, it's gonna take the Instagram water. So there's a way around that. Um, the only thing with that and it takes time to go build another one for TikTok. You're right. One yep. Facebook. So CapCut, it's one of the other tools I'm gonna to recommend for you guys to use. Uh, so CapCut is another editing tool that has like all these built-in features. There, I think TikTok actually owns them. So it's really easy for you to be able to push it everywhere else. So I think CapCut, if you are gonna edit, it's a good one to do. Um, so the way that you do it with uh, on here is when you're actually, once you get to editing the video and it's in a preview, up top, there's a little download button. So before you actually publish the video inside of Instagram, you can hit the little top button. And then actually, I'll show you when we finish here. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you could download it there. The only thing with that is that, what I realized is that when you download it inside of the Instagram app, the, the resolution, so if it's like, 1080, it goes down to 720. It's not that big of a deal. Um, I, was, I wouldn't like try to re-edit that video if I was just gonna upload it, I think it's fine, but you can actually get around that. Um, so right next to trending, there's templates. Like I'm telling you, like they are trying to make it super easy for you. So you can just pick any of these templates when you click on them. So like right here, so all you have to do, it says like add media and you can just upload all of your clips that you shot on there and it does all the cuts for you. Like it's literally like the easiest way for you guys to make content. The only thing that you have to do is maybe like, if it's like a 10 second clip and it's only like 2.8, you wanna find that part on the clip that the action's at. Like what's the best way for me to showcase and frame this? So just keep that in mind. But like there's no easier way to make content right now. And they already picked out the song for you too. So it's literally like, you're literally just going in plug and play. Okay, so um, as you're going through Instagram and you're finding all of these different ideas and things, and you're like, hey, that looks cool. I want you guys to start doing is right on the bottom, uh, towards the bottom right corner, there's gonna be those three little dots. When you click those three little dots, you're actually gonna be able to save those posts. So what we do with my clients and my own team is when my client sees something she likes, she actually add it to a collection that she can share it with me. So for you guys, if you have you know kids or if you have a team, 
like if your kids see something that you're like, hey, let them know what you're trying to do this year. And be like, hey, if you ever see something that you think that's cool that mom or dad can make for our business, can you share that with me and start a collection with them? So for me, I build one for my talk ideas. So all the research I was doing before coming here, I have another one for videos to create for. These are all the videos that I need to make. And then I have one for workouts that I'm never gonna do, but I like to save them <laughs> just in case one day I decide that I wanna get fit, they're gonna be there for me, so. <coughs> so just quick strategies for you guys. Uh, the way I like to use strategies or the way I like to use video is stories. Stories are for daily updates. So for me, I've been sharing my story of coming here and doing this talk for you guys through my Instagram. Um, the reels, reels are great for you guys to reach new audience. So these are people that are already not following you. Reels is the best way for you to actually get discovered. And then you can do photos and carousels to promote your business or product. Uh, one thing that's trending right now with Instagram is that uh, a photo image with videos attached to it. So the first carousel would be like, you could do new product and then swipe to see colors. So the more engagement that you're able to create on your post itself, it does send Instagram a notification, like, hey, they're swiping on this. They're trying to find out like what's more in there. So the more they engage, the more signals it sends to Instagram that this is relatable, and they end up showing it to more people. How many of you guys have an idea of how the Instagram algorithm works? Cool, no one really does, but I'll tell you guys what's happening. So let's say you have 100 followers, right? When you post something, Instagram is gonna show that to the first 10 people. Based on those 10 people, how they interact with your post, it's then gonna push it out to more people. So what happens when we're creating promotional content and it's, we're sharing on Instagram, where we're not getting those shares, those likes, those comments, Instagram is, you're, we're signaling to Instagram like, hey, no one wants to see this. So Instagram, what it does is stop showing it to people. So now if you create something that's very shareable and people are liking, commenting, and sharing it, it's gonna show it to the next 10 people and then it goes up to 20%. And after that, when it hits a, a certain sh uh, threshold, it starts showing it to everybody. I have an, uh, several Instagram pages because I have multiple businesses and my daughter was eating a lotte. Uh -huh. And it was at that moment, just to like highlight that I went to go see my daughter at, on campus where she goes to school, it got a lot of love. But I didn't want the picture of the lotte there, but it had a lot of love. But I still knocked it out. And I just wondered if that would have You should have kept it. If it affected anything. I, I don't think it would affect it. I think for for you, I, I think moments like that, it's what makes you more relatable to people. So I think you sharing those personal moments, because people are going to be like, hey, why is there a latte, a photo of a latte with, between all these scrubs? I don't know what else you had on there. But it's going to get people to think, be like, wow, sh this lady went to go see her daughter in school. Family is important to her. Well, Mm -hmm. How many followers do you have? So that's why I was like, that's where I was thinking, like, in what direction? Because I know that some people will just strictly point, uh, post in a certain, um, and even if it's a, just a single person, yeah. like, you go to their page and, like, it's all the way through from beginning to end, that same color scheme, that same look, that same direction, and then I feel like my content isn't good enough. I want to say it's not good enough, but I think I want you to remember that Jeff, like Bezos' photo, is that like your beginning and where you're at is going to look very different than somebody else's. So, yeah, it's it's going to look different. Uh, I think for you, it's focusing really on creating that content and getting yourself out there and get comfortable with the cadence of creating content that you actually enjoy. And then eventually you can come in and start focusing on that. But I think the beginning, I think you just figuring out, hey, what kind of content can I create that it's gonna get attention and it's gonna get engagement? That's what I'll focus on. And then I think the static will be like the next thing that you really wanna focus on. Because if you're sitting here and you're thinking about like, am I not gonna post this because it won't look good on my feed? Like I'd rather you post that piece of content. No, I'll post, but I just <laughs> think about it. Believe it. <laughs> Um, all right, who's using AI in here? Okay, a couple of people. Chat GTP, I'm guessing? Yeah. Cool. So uh, I have a couple of prompts for you guys to use in your business. Um, 
So take a photo, you can take a photo of this or I'll send you the slides after. So chat, um, if you guys are not paying the 20 bucks a month, it's probably the best $20 you could spend a, a month for your business. This helps us do so much content for clients, even coming up with ideas and uh, captions and things like that. So this one, uh, I kind of changed it for you guys, but I don't know how many of you guys are doing this, is that I see a big mistake is that people just kind of put a blank question into uh, chat without prompting it. You wanna give it some feedback. So for this one, the main part was, act as an expert social media copywriter for a scrub retailer. And then I gave it a goal of what I wanted to do and then also gave it an outcome. So for me, in the past, I always struggled of like what to write for this because like, you know, working with an interior designer, like I didn't know a lot about an interior design, but chat was able to help me. So this is another one for you guys um, that you can take a photo of. All right. And then this is what it turned out. So I just found some random photos on the internet and I, you can actually upload photos to chat right now with uh, the version four. And it's really good at understanding what the photos are. So for this one, I ended up uploading the two photos. I gave it that prompt and it gave me a pretty decent caption. Of course, it's not perfect, but it's one of those things that you, it gives you a starting point to be able to start making content a lot faster versus sitting there because I've been guilty of like wanting to post something and have nothing to say about it. So at least if you're able to feed these ideas to chat, it's gonna help you start making content a little bit faster. Yes. Exactly. There are different levels. So chat, they, it keeps getting better and better. The free version, I think is 3.0, uh, version four right now. It's like number, the knowledge that it has, it's like on steroids compared to three. And it's also been more updated on things. So like with four, uh, something that I did, I don't know if it was for this one, but, um, I was actually, uh, is it Jeunesse? Uh, that's you. Perfect. So actually what I did yesterday, I actually ran your website through chat. I uploaded to uh, number four and actually asked it to give me ideas to how to write your bio. So other things that we've done in the past is finding uh, other companies that we inspired to be like, and I'd be like, Hey, go through this website for me. Tell me what are the key points of what they're selling are. And then look at my website. What are the things that I'm missing on here? How can I start filling in the gap? So like I said, for the 20 bucks you spend to use chat, to do this kind of research, it's stuff that used to take you like weeks to do that you can do now in minutes. Um, and you can get really crazy. Like we've done like uh, complete customer profiles for like other businesses of like needs, wants, uh, what are gonna be the rejections that they're gonna have about uh, working with us and things like that. Like it can, it, it's really smart. Um, so with all of this, I want you guys to become a mad scientist. Experiment with the content, you know, figure out what works for you. Some stuff uh, you're not gonna enjoy doing, some other things it will, but I want you guys to just experiment, get your foot out there and start uh, making stuff. So, but ask yourself, is a post you're about to put out, is it shareable? You know, I think that's a big thing, is it shareable? Because if it looks like an ad, smells like an ad, people are gonna know it's an ad. I don't know we have to promote our products at a certain point, but I think there's ways to do it. So I want you guys to think, that, think about that. Um, so going back to what we we're talking about, if you spend too much time thinking about a thing, you'll never get it done. So Bruce Lee quote is, I want you guys to just get out there and post it. Um, you'd be surprised. We have done videos that were filmed on uh, like a cell phone or videos that we thought that were not gonna be good and we ended up posting it anyways, ended up doing like 200,000 views. And then we have done videos that we spent two or three days editing that we post and it flops. So it's one of those things like you never really know what it's gonna work and you know what people are really going to be engaged with. But unless you're getting out there and you're posting and you're getting some data or feedback of what's actually gonna work for you, you're just never gonna know. So some days you might shoot something and it might, you might think it doesn't look good, but I want you guys to just get it out there because as I talked about in the beginning, for a lot of you creating content right now, no one's really gonna be watching. I want you guys to figure out what works for you. I want you guys to keep working on your craft. Uh, here are some accounts to follow. These are just, when I was doing some research, I found that they're like, hey, they had some pretty good ideas. So of course, when you're starting out, you know, try to replicate them if you can, make your own little spin to it. So I think the first one, uh, Style Runner, that was a shoe company. These are other uh, scrub brands I saw that they're like doing stuff. <laughs> 
Uh, I want you guys to think about it as like, look at Lululemon account, what they're doing, right? Like they're always promoting the lifestyle and health. And if, of course they're always wearing the leggings and stuff, but they're not directly selling you. So like, I want you guys like to start thinking about your feed and what they're posting like that. Uh, Mozeri, he's like the COO of Instagram right now. Uh, great person to follow because anytime a new Instagram feature comes out, he's explaining to you, hey, this is what's happening in the platform. This is what we're doing. Here are the new features. Like he's really listening to what people are asking for and he's always updating you. Chris Doe, his business mentor, if you wanna learn about personal branding and really to like define your voice, a great person to follow. And then Alex Hermosi, if you haven't heard of him, uh, really great two books for a business. And then uh, Steven, I think this one of you guys, if you're not sure what to create, Steven has about 2 million followers and his whole account is like, you'll see a viral video and then he breaks it down how to recreate that video using CapCut. So like all on your phone. Uh, apps and tools, uh, CapCut, that's probably a big one if you're just editing on your phone. Uh, captions app, so this one here is that video you saw with the interior designer that she was talking. What we're able to do is you upload that clip to the captions app, it will actually cut out all the ums, buts, and things like that and add the captions in for you. So the video's ready to go. It's, and that one's free. I don't know what, how it's free, but it's free. And you can upload your own colors. There's different font styles. Uh, Instagram Reels, ready to show you guys that. ChatGTP for ideas. Opus One, this is something for you guys that I think it would be really cool is if you're not sure how to start making content, I'll start with the podcast or video podcast that you guys are interviewing the business owners that you actually want to work with. But not to talk about your scrubs, but talk about their business. Say that you're starting a local podcast on you know how successful doctors run their business. You're gonna start building connections. And then from there, you can upload that to Opus One and it will actually pull out all the clips from that that they like, like have some kind of AI that kind of figures out like, hey, these are gonna be some good clips and it breaks everything down from you. So you can get anywhere from like 15 to 30 clips per video from there. Uh, Canva for design, uh, they've gotten really good. Adobe Express, I love this as well because you can upload your all your colors on there and then they have like this remix tool that if you need to like format it from like a square to wide, it does it all for you really nicely. Uh, Flick Social is really good for Instagram hashtags. Uh, this is what I use for a lot of my clients. Um, I did some work for you guys. Here are some hashtags that I found that are low hanging fruit right now and you guys can start using. So one other thing that I like to do, I'll, I'll use that flick.social and then when I find one of these hashtags, I'll end up clicking over to the hashtag and I'll see what are the top posts. Once I'm in to see what the top posts are, I'll, I'll look to see what are the other hashtags that they're using that I haven't thought about yet that I'm not using on mine. And for a lot of you guys, if you're, your account's fairly small, don't use hashtags that have like a million hits on it because no one's gonna see it. It's one of those things of like a blue ocean, red ocean. Like if it's, if it's oversaturated, like don't even try to go in there, try to find some more uh, low hanging fruits. And just try to think about outside of the box. Like <laughs> Nurse Fit, I ended up finding when I was looking through uh, TikTok randomly, but it was one of those things like, oh, that makes sense, right? Nurses want to show out their outfits, but like Nurse Fit, I thought it was a pretty cool one. I looked at a profile yesterday, Junest Uniforms, uniform supplier for people that matter, had a hashtag in there, and then they had their URL, their address, and then they also had a link. Uh, the thing that I changed about it was I put their logo in there because the photo being a group photo, you can't tell who it is. So if you're scrolling, you have no idea who that person is. You want to have something that's going to help people identify who you are. Uh, another thing I changed is your name. I put uniform and scrubs because that's where your name that you have up here, it doesn't have to be the same one there, but that's the keywords that Google, uh, that Instagram is actually using to find out what your account's about. So when you have, I would add whatever keyword you're gonna be found for inside your name, uniform supplier, and I just changed it a little bit. I used uh, ChatGCP to help me rewrite that. And then I said, find your color and style, click the link below. I removed your uh, URL because you already had the URL on your Instagram handle, but then you also had the link on there. I wanna give them less things to look at. Um, here are some books that I recommend within, you know, just about storytelling, uh, branding, uh, things that just helped me in my journey. 
and thank you.